What's up everybody? Welcome to this video of our Shine On Quick Start course. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about scaling your winners. If you're watching this video and you've made it through all the others and you put every single step into action the entire course of the way, and you finally have a product that you're ready to scale, congratulations, give yourself a pat on the back. You've taken massive action and you deserve to reap the rewards. So let's talk about how you can scale your winning products. First, let's talk a little bit about the different kinds of scaling that you're gonna be able to do. There is vertical scaling. Vertical scaling typically refers to increasing budgets. And this is one way to scale, vertical scaling. You increase the budget. So you basically just keep adding more and more money to the campaign as it scales. Then you have what they call horizontal scaling. You'll probably hear these terms thrown around a little bit in various Facebook groups. Horizontal scaling has to do with going wide, right? Increasing interest, increasing ad sets, duplicating campaigns, things like that. So one is to increase budgets directly. The other is to just duplicate campaigns, ad sets, try different interests, that kind of thing. Now, what the process typically looks like in reality is you don't just do vertical scaling, you don't just do horizontal scaling, you kind of do this, you kind of do this stair step kind of motion where you scale a little bit with budget and then you test some other interests or something like that and then you scale your budget a little bit more and so on and so forth. It's a very kind of touch and go process and you kind of have to feel things out based on how your campaign and your niche is performing. Now, whenever we talk about scaling methods, one thing I like to say is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If your testing methods were kind of working for you, then try to scale using the testing method that was working for you. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You don't need to get in there and just start throwing new campaign structures into the mix because you might screw things up. You might mess things up. So if the testing method was working for you, see if you can scale using that method. If you can't scale using your existing testing method, maybe then it's time to try on one of these other scaling methods I'm about to show you. Now, the first method I wanna show you is called Robots Take the Wheel. We call it Robots Take the Wheel. So it's one CBO campaign with a $250 to $1,000 a day budget. So it's one CBO campaign. Now the budget can not exceed $1,000 if you're really scaling a product well. Now inside this campaign, you're gonna have multiple ad sets and each ad set is gonna have either a duplicate or a unique interest. So you can duplicate an interest that's already working well for you. This would be horizontal scaling, or you can try some other unique interest, another form of horizontal scaling. Now, you'll notice I go from ad set one to dot, 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 26, 27, and so on and so forth. The idea here is that you can just keep adding new ad sets into this CBO campaign and just turn off the ones that aren't working, keep the ones that are working turned on. At any given time, you'll probably want three to five ad sets active in the campaign. And the idea is that you just keep feeding this campaign data. You just keep feeding it data with all these ad sets and ads. Feed it data, give the algorithm data and information to work with, and it will become fine-tuned uh, buyer finding machine for you. So you just keep feeding it data. So this is called Robots Take the Wheel. One CBO campaign, you can scale up the budget, multiple ad sets, try to keep only three to five ad sets on at any given time. Use your best ad and your best copy. All right, the next method I want to tell you about is the old school method. So back before Facebook got real advanced with its algorithm, you used to have to build lots of kind of complex funnels to do your marketing. You'd have to drive awareness, then increase engagement and educate people and overcome objections, and then finally go for the purchase with an offer and things like that. And you'd build these kind of complex marketing funnels around each stage of the funnel, around each milestone in the customer journey. Well, since iOS 14 and some of Facebook's algorithm updates, we have found that some of these campaign structures are starting to work again. So one that we're finding is working for us is structuring your campaigns in top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel campaign. So at the top of the funnel, you typically have one ad set. We really are trying to simplify our campaign structures here. That's something we're finding is working right now post iOS 14. So we have top of funnel campaign with one ad set, and we're usually using a link clicks or landing page objective here. Now I tend to like link clicks because it's something that Facebook can track right on platform and they don't have to depend upon page analytics or page attribution data. They can just do it right on their platform. They know when people are clicking links. 
So I tend to like to use link click uh, conversion objectives. However, just create your ad set. That's what you're going for. You're basically creating a traffic campaign at this level. And you want to exclude anybody that's viewed content or clicked to your website in the last 30 days. You're trying to find prospects. These are all people that should have never visited your site before. Then you want to go to your middle of funnel, your middle of funnel. Now, your middle of funnel is where you're going to start to use the purchase conversion objective and you're going to include anybody that's clicked your website as part of your custom audience. You're going to include them, but exclude anybody that's purchased. So if they've clicked before, but they didn't purchase, they're in the middle of the funnel, right? If they've never clicked before, you're going to be targeting them up here. As soon as they've clicked, you start to target them right here. But if they haven't purchased yet, you don't go any further. And then finally, for bottom of funnel, what we're trying to do is you include anybody that's added to cart. So hopefully up here, they either purchase or they add to cart. But if they still don't buy here, you almost target them again. And you're including anybody that's added to cart, but hasn't purchased. You're targeting anybody that's added to cart here, but hasn't purchased. And you're going for the purchase here and your bottom of funnel. This is where you're going to want to run more aggressive offers, free shipping, uh, time bound stuff, increase that sense of urgency, maybe run with some review ads, things like that. Again, you're trying to pull out all the stops to really get these people who are right on the fence to make a decision to buy. And finally, the last method I'd like to tell you about is called the street luge method. Now, again, remember I told you post iOS 14, we're finding simplified campaign structures are working the best. Well, this is what's coming out of our test results. We're finding that since you can't really trust a lot of attribution data post iOS 14, you really have to trust what data Facebook gives you right inside of Ads Manager, the stuff that they can track on their own platform, like link clicks, and then the sales data you get in Shopify or from our platform on ShineOn. So this is a structure that we're finding is kind of working. You just go one, one, and one. So one campaign, one ad set, go broad, you have a huge audience in here, and then one ad. Now look, if you have a product that you know only women are going to buy, it's okay to exclude males here. If you know they have to be married or some other high level interest, it's okay to include that. The biggest thing is you only want to test about one interest at a time because if you have a bunch of these fired up and Facebook's not attributing very well, you're going to really struggle to know which ads are performing and which ones aren't. So the best thing to do is simplify things down, try to get rid of as many variables as you cannot control as possible, and just try to stick with what you can control. Now, you know that link click data on the Facebook platform is accurate, right? So in Ads Manager, when you look at CTR and things like that, you know that'll be accurate. And then you can also go back to Shopify sales data or the platform sales data, and you know the sales data will be accurate. So you're trying to optimize your campaigns based on those two numbers alone. And when you're doing that, you're just not gonna be able to have tons and tons of campaigns unless you're using some other attribution methods like UTM or a paid solution like Hyros, for example. But we're finding that simplifying your campaign structures is starting to work pretty well. So again, here we just have one campaign, one ad set. It's a huge audience, right? And then one ad. And we typically are running this with a fairly large budget. I mean, we're talking at least several hundred dollars. We want to give this campaign lots of data to work with. We're also finding that obviously this works better once your pixel has collected quite a bit of data. So you need probably at least a hundred purchases for this thing to really kind of kick off for you and to work really well. But we are finding success with ad structures that are more simple, kind of like this. All right. And finally, I just want to say, keep experimenting. You have to keep experimenting. Facebook is changing all the time. Buyer demographics are changing all the time. The economy is changing all the time. There are all these kind of influences in the marketplace that are constantly changing things. They're stretching things, pulling things. Uh, stuff is getting shaken around all the time. So you have to keep experimenting with the different methods that you use. Test different campaign structures. Try different unique interests. Try different tracking tools. We really like UTM. That's working well for us. We're also experimenting with tracking tools like Hyros. We also, though, are trying to do things like simplified campaign structures and just using data we know we can trust. Keep in mind, marketers have always had to do this from the beginning of time. Things are constantly changing. Technologies are changing. Mediums people are using are changing. Platforms are changing. All that kind of stuff. And you have to change with the times. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you keep experimenting. I view Facebook almost like my own little science lab. 
I mean, seriously, it's like your own little lab and you get to run all these really cool experiments. You get feedback in real time. So, you know, if something's working, not working and you can adjust and optimize accordingly. So make sure no matter what you do, no matter what method is working for you, keep on experimenting. That is the name of the game. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap up this video of the Quick Start course. I hope you found it helpful and we'll see you in the next one.